Habaragani, everybody, is Kwanzaa time. And when you say Habaragani, uh, there's a response. Habaragani Uchima. Uchima, which means collective work and responsibility. We still have four more days? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And I want to say that y'all are having a Kwanzaa celebration yes. at um, Marion, Marion Hall on the corner of University Drive and Martin Luther King from 1 to 3 p.m. 1 to 3. The time was changed from 1 to 3. Daytime. Okay, so if you're looking for a Kwanzaa celebration, head on down there where Catherine and I. Mm -hmm. All right. We have a guest in the house today. I call him Dippy Number Two, but he's gonna introduce <laughs> himself. Uh, my name is Davidi and Deron Rowell Jr. Uh, I am in third grade. I go to Randall's Elementary, and how old are you? And I am eight years old. And Do you live here in Flint. Uh, yes. Oh, okay. And I and I am the great grandson. Great grandson of Captain Blake. That's all. Right here. <laughs> he said that's all. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Well, we got a guess and maybe we'll influence him enough to one day he wants to learn all about himself, where he came from. And you can find all that information out from your grandmama. I know. <laughs> Listen to it. I love that. <laughs> our family, I know they care more, a lot about me and I care more about the I care more about them than I care about myself. Oh, oh. ain't you sweet? He's a sweetheart. That's gonna change. <laughs> <laughs> That's no, it's not. Okay, well, let's stay that way, baby. But also learn your story, our story, who you are, where you came from. Amen. And your grandmama is a good example because she yeah. she's into our story, she's into our history, and she will tell you that stuff. And it's good to know that that gives you pride about yourself, love of self. Amen. Which you seem to have a good deal of anyway. Don't let nobody take it from you. I know. Because okay. if they take it from you, it's not really about, it's, you won't, like, you know what I mean? No. Yeah, yeah, we do. You not, you might. I don't know what you say. <laughs> if they take it in you, and you know, because you, you ain't going to let nobody take it. Because mm -hmm. your grandma ain't going to let that happen. She going to keep you lifted up. You know, and if somebody tried to say, uh-uh, my grandmama said, <laughs> okay? Dad. All right. All right. Nice to meet you, tip, Dippy number two. <laughs> and you tell your daddy I said that. <clears throat> I know. I will. All right. All right, let's move forward. Today, I'm going to tell our story about the founding father of Phi Eta Psi fraternity mm -hmm. here in Flint, Michigan. And then Miss B is going to tell us a very interesting story about Planet of the Apes. Look, there she go. <laughs> Planet of the Apes. Right here oh, wow. on this earth. Yes. Okay. So let me get into this story right quick about him. Uh, we, did we finish talking about uh, Kwanzaa? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I'm pretty sure. Move on forward with it then. Okay, um, th they had a 50-year final celebration that was held in honor of Willie Bucks coordinating and implementing the fraternity Phi Eta Psi. It will be held, it will be, a, well, it's already over because it was done in November, but I didn't know this guy had started this fraternity, this black fraternity. Willie Buck Sr. was born on November 28, 1945 in Madison, Mississippi. Willie attended Flint Public Schools. During those years, he became the captain of Northern High School's football and track team. Mm. He was the fastest junior high school track star in the history of the city of Flint. Wow. And became a local legend. I don't know nothing about this guy myself, but... He, he saw him, he 50 years, this was a 50 year celebration, so he was maybe younger than I am. Mm -hmm. Pretty sure. At an early age, Willie had a vision of brotherhood among young black men and it materialized when he founded Phi Eta Psi Fraternity Incorporated. Willie had a very close bond with his mother, Etta. Mm. Is that something? 
So it was the only fitting, it was only fitting to Let name something. Mama. Shh, shh. Huh? Mm -mm. Okay. I lost my track. Get him and his mother. Close oh, they're close. Okay. So it was only fitting to name something he was so compassionate about after his mom. Fifty years later, his legacy still thrives. Willie married his dream come true, a uh, girly shop Byron. On oh, April 7, 1973, Willie had four children. He worked as an environmental health inspector employed for over 20 years with Genesee County's Health Department. He loved politics and people. Mm -hmm. Willie was president of both local 496 AFCME and the Sickle Cell Anemia Foundation. He coached for UYAA during his illness for his youngest son, winning the 1996 championship for 10 and under. Phi Edisai would like to let all of y'all know who he was he was, uh, he founded this at Charles Stewart Mock, and he was born on April 5th, 1965. Yeah, he's, he's young down there with my son. So, that's our story about the founding father of Phi Eta Psi fraternity. And from this uh, announcement, it looked like he had the past. He's oh. not here. Because they, they say he loved mm -hmm. politics and people. You know, and they was talking about he hit he married his dream. Mm -hmm. That sounds like an obituary. It does, doesn't it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we just wanted you to know who found uh, who was the founding father of Phi and a Psi fraternity, black fraternity, mm -hmm. here in Flint, Michigan. I didn't know that. That's good information. Yep, it was. It was something I found, and it was in the career. They have some young man. Too. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you're very compassionate about your mother. Yes. Yes. But my whole family. Yeah. <clears throat> Well, <laughs> that's, that is absolutely wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> it's awesome. Don't lose it. <laughs> okay. All right. Now let's move forward with Miss mm -hmm. B's story. Uh, our story about Ilya Anovich Avanov. Right. All right. But before I get to that, I, I, you asked me a question at our last show. About when we talked about uh, the Alabama state apologized 67 years later to Reese Taylor for failure to prosecute her attackers that had raped her. These were white men that raped this black woman. This was something that was going around. And you asked me, did it still exist today? Well, as we have found out in the news lately, uh, this was a, a Oklahoma cop was a serial rapist with a badge. Mm -hmm. He victimized 13 women. He attended, uh, he was a football player at Eastern Michigan University. Uh, he got sentenced to 263 years plus 30 years. Cried like a baby. Yes. He was just a cry. Yeah, oh Lord. Mm -hmm. like, he got caught. Who would have thought this? That was so punkish. Yeah. So many women that he had and would have continued. He wouldn't have stopped. He would, and those was only, the, he, they only did eight of them. Mm -hmm. This right. man, they had 13. 13. That's, but how many more had he been doing? Doing that too. And not only that, but as they dug a little deeper, they found out that there are nationwide a thousand officers. Do you hear me? Been raping women? Have lost their license for sex crimes. Against women? Against women. As police officers? As police officers. Well, and we, you and I were talking earlier. How do you go to the police to tell the police what, About some, some, yeah. what they're doing? And how do you protect yourself when the police is harassing you like that? And these are the police. These yeah. are the people yeah. are protecting they, you. In very few places. You actually, don't know what to do. Every very few places actually have a oversight, you know, committee or anything to to check in on charges against police officers. Basically, it's up to like I, you know, internal affairs. And basically that's, you know, cops enforcing stuff mm -hmm. on cops. And that means a lot yeah. of times they're under pressure. They're not going to do anything. And, and there's like, there's a lot of, I mean, in Flint, example, I grew up around here. 
I don't even gauge how many times I've seen the officers engage in activity that was illegal. And who do we go to see? Who do you go to see? And that's mm-hmm. that's that's rampant. And the thing is, that's what's really people taking a lot of people off is that you know the body cams and people have cell phones, the cameras mm-hmm. on them. That's really angering a lot of the rogue police you know element out there because they don't like to be reported on. But it's this is and you know if you do if you do get raped by a policeman and you tell on them, they um. They get harass your family, threaten you all the time, mm-hmm. mess with you. Just sit outside. That would scare the poot out of you. Well, you know, one of the ways that, that they uh, caught him was the location, the GPS in his car put him at the place where these women say they were raped. Oh. They got him. They got him. There was no way to get away from that one. Okay. He didn't have body cameras on him, but that GPS in that car. That's what showed it up. That's how they got it. And he had no age preference. He was, uh, yeah, uh, this last woman is move his mic from here because I can hear him talk. Okay, 50 years old. Yeah, 50 years old. And she said he got the wrong one this 50, time. 17. I mean, he had no age. Mm-mm. But also, why are you telling about this? Uh, <clears throat> I, it's, uh, it's been uh, out on the internet about Sandra Bland, mm-hmm. who was the lady that was murdered in jail under mm-hmm. police custody when mm-hmm. they stopped her. And, and uh, they've been showing the video. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm sure it's on television. There was no indictment against any of the police officers for the mur- her murder. Her family is still saying that she was murdered. Uh, yeah. Seventy, she got stopped for a light going about her business. Uh, this police, I, I, I got to look. Let me touch on. I'm not gonna say it's a theory. Mm-hmm. And I don't like conspiracy theories. Well, I can go on and talk about uh, this uh, USSR tried and failed to breed man and <clears throat> chimp. This was uh, Dr. Ilya Ivanov. He was an eminent biologist who achieved considerable success in the field of artificial insemination of horses and other animals. He was called to be one of the greatest authorities on artificial insemination and he graduated from the Kharkov University in 1896 and became a professor of zoology in 1907. His artificial insemination techniques were so successful so successful that he was able to fertilize as many as 500 mares with the semen of a single stallion. Mares are <clears throat> female horses. Mm-hmm. See, I'm, I'm telling you all of this to get into wh- what he was really doing. Mm-hmm. Ivanov also pioneered the use of artificial insemina- insemination to produce various hybrids, including that of the zebra and the donkey, the rat and the mouse, a mouse, a guinea pig, and an antelope and a cow. (laughs) His most radical experiment, though, was his attempt to produce a human-ape hybrid. Do I need to say that again? A human-ape hybrid. He felt that this feat was clearly possible in view of how successful he had been in his animal experiments and how close evolutionary biologists then regarded apes and humans. And the experiments were supported by some of the most respected biologists of the day. Okay? But it also says... In the 1920s, he's carried out a series of experiments to create a human, yeah, I'm getting non-human there. hybrid, mm-hmm. working with human sperm and female chimpanzees. Oh wait, hold on, hold on. Yeah, that in the 1920s, he was funded by the Soviet government to hybridize humans and apes by artificial insemination. Okay. His first attempt to produce a human male chimpanzee female hybrid. All three uh, attempts failed. Then he tried to attempt to use eight males and human females 
to produce hybrids, but was unable to complete the experiment because the women died. How do you suppose he was trying to do that? Was that artificial insemination or was it something else? Hold on. You asked a question. I said, <laughs> hold on. Okay. Go ahead. Okay. Um, where am I? Let me see. Where am I? Okay. You know, in, in 1924, he completed his first experiment in French Guinea. Mm -hmm. You know, he first attempted to produce the human male and the chimpanzee female hybrids and all three failed mm. Mm -hmm. because Ivanov was then an internationally respected scientist he was able to obtain prominent sponsors for his project project Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, that's what they call it. Yep, that's what they call it. The project was supported by the American Association for the Advancement of Atheism because it was seen as proof of human evolution and therefore of atheism. Okay? Mm -hmm. Now we come into what was really going on. However, the scientists' advisors wanted the field researchers to use orangutans, chimpanzees, gorillas, and possibly gibbons in the those gibbons are small mm -hmm, they? in the experiment. Mm -hmm. And the researchers accepted this theory of human evolution, concluding that. Orangutan should be crossed with humans of the yellow race, gorillas with the humans of the black race, chimpanzees with the white race, and the gibbons with the Jews. Jews? With the Jews. Jews. Jewish people. Jewish people. And the purpose was to try to demonstrate a close relationship of humans and apes together. So he just didn't experiment on black people. Oh, wait a minute. He experimented on mm -hmm. all different races in, in the world, really. But yeah. they only have, um, so from what I'm understanding, well, let me just. Jesus, I just see something. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. Um, okay, hold on. Okay. England noted that the research team would proceed along these lines because the scientists involved were all in complete accord with Dr. Cruikshaft's view. Now he was the one that uh, funding this. To achieve their research goals, the scientists used deception. Okay, for example, Ivanov attempted to inseminate black females with ape sperm without their consent under the pretense of medical examinations in the local hospital. This was that he was working in a hospital mm -hmm. and doing this to And he inseminated the these black women. But what got me is it says the scientists concluded those matches about the different orangutan chimpanzee, mm -hmm. chimpanzee uh, that, let me see, that the hybrids were fertile because it was believed that the yellow race, that's Asian, yeah, evolved from orangutans, yeah, and the black race from gorillas, gorillas. <laughs> and the white race from chimpanzees, mm -hmm. and the brachycephalic people from Gibeon, and I guess the brach that's the Jews, okay, Jewish people, mm -hmm. okay. They even concluded that it would be possible to produce the complete chain of specimens <laughs> from the perfect anthropoid to the perfect man. Mm -hmm. It's, it's, it's crazy. crazy. I know. But they actually did it. Actually, yeah. In the end, the research failed and has not been attempted again, at least publicly, for you to know about we it. We know about right. it. Right. Today we know it would not be successful for these reasons. One problem is humans have 46 chromosomes. Apes have 48. 
and for this reason the chromosomes will not pair up properly even if a zygote is formed. Another problem is the conservatively estimated 40 million base pair differences exist between humans and our punitive closest evolutionary relatives, the chimps. These experiments are the result of evolutionary thinking and they failed because their basis premise is false. But they actually did it. And there are some books and there are some that I plan to do some more research on. Uh, this one is uh, The Russians Admit Ape Experiments. Uh, this one is uh, The Forgotten Scandal of the Soviet Ape Man. And the third one I want to get is The Forgotten Scandal of Hybridizing Humans and Apes. This is a study of history and philosophy of biological and biomedical sciences. These are some books that I intend to do more research on because I know that there is more evidence uh, um, than just what is right here about the uh, unknowing of the artificial insemination in the hospitals. Because, you know, this, this meant they were very very the the things that they did to people period and still are they still are doing the people I mean it's just absolutely crazy yes uh, I mean you know that, that's I always say mm -hmm. man you inhumanity toward other man mm -hmm. is really something but I also want to say something about this uh, for example Ivanov attempted to inseminate black females with ape sperm without their consent under the pretext of medical examination. Mm -hmm. So things can happen to you. And you don't even know Don't it. even know it. And, and you're just thinking you're going in for mm -hmm. a medical examination in, in the hospital. Mm -hmm. And the French governor, however, <clears throat> forbade him from carrying out this part of the project. But Ivanov saw no moral, mm -mm. no moral problem here. He angrily reported to his sponsors in the Kremlin about the primitive fears of the blacks mm -hmm. <laughs> and the bourgeoisie prejudice <laughs> of the French. Mm -hmm. Time magazine opinion that if this experiment failed, evolution would still not be invalidated. See, they're going off on mm -hmm. ev evolution. Still going off on that. Because this test of evolution would be device decisive only in the event that pregnancy whether productive of healthy offspring or not, could, could be, be induced. Mm -hmm. Conversely, if the experiment succeeded, fresh and final evidence would be established that humans and anthropoids belong to a common genius of animal life. Will you read that part again where you said the reason it did not work? Okay. One more time. Wow. In the end, the research failed and has not been attempted again, at least pub not publicly. One problem is humans have 46 chromosomes, apes have 48. And for this reason, the chromosomes will not, will not pair up properly, even if a zygote is formed. Another problem is conservatively estimated 40 million base pair differences exist between humans and our punitive closest evolutionary relatives, the, the chimps. chimps. They still off on this evolution, mm -hmm. man. They need to stop. These experiments are the result of evolutionary thinking and they fail because their basic premise is false. Are they trying to be God? Yeah. They want to create something so bad? Well that was one of the uh, reasons I had read that before too. They were trying to uh, make create this human ape army invincible and I strong. read about that a long time ago. Yeah. But this here is much more detailed. Yes, and I'm going to get more details about it because what, especially when it says here that the women die, 
What did they die from? So did they die from the baby was trying to be was being I I think it was growth during within? trying to consent. To I think it was an artificial insemination. You think they had a Absolutely. You got me having now. Having yes. sex with well, Women? we're going to find out in the book because I'm going to get those books. Well, keep us informed. More detail. Yeah, keep us informed. And uh, even though it says here, human, male, chimpanzee, female hybrids, now that's a man, and the attempts failed, and then he attempted to use eight males with human females, but the women died. It still could have been they got in practice. Get the book. They, I'm saying they got pregnant and the baby grew okay, and then they Buck killed. Buck was unable to complete the experiment. If the baby died, okay, I think because the, at least five of the women died. Okay, what I recall from what I heard about this case, this incident, I mean, and I heard about it several years ago, is that um, they were actually he was under pressure from the, within. Plus, they were going to cut his budget, and there were yeah, some, they were, there, yeah. there were some actually some people opposing them. You know, that they leaked out. I mean, the Soviet Union at that point, though, was pretty much, the, the expression Iron Curtain is pretty accurate. It was pretty impregnable. And so a lot of things you didn't know. We don't know. Everybody talks about the Jews that died during the Holocaust, the, the um, you know, during they the Second World War. The, on them, the Russians, yeah, the Russians, well, the Russians. And all the black slaves. Mm -hmm. well, the Soviet Union did a horrific stuff. The Soviet Union people did a horrific things within people, ethnic groups within their own countries. Millions and millions. Of, it's there's untold millions that died during that during that type of era, especially under the Stalin era. Mm -hmm. Stalin was Stalin was far worse for body count than Hitler was. Nobody actually wants to acknowledge that because he was our ally, but he had more dead people underneath his watch, at his own at his uh, you know at his his orders than Hitler had. Mm -hmm. So nobody wants to talk about that because we're allied with him. But he was evil. He was he was just as bad, or if not worse, in many instances than Hitler was. Well, that French government uh, in Guinea threw that man out. Mm -hmm. Out of their country. He said, no, y'all ain't going to be doing this mess up in here. And I wonder how did they find out in the hospital that he did that. I, I, I'd like to know that, too. I just told you. I, I think most people... I think she, had, she was trying... She, that baby, she got inseminated. That's my theory. Now, you come back after you get the book uh -huh. and tell us. <laughs> That she uh, tried to have that baby and die if she was in the hospital. Because he did the experiments in the hospital. Yeah, but the chromosomes don't match up. They, that, that's she would have had a weird baby. Mind you of a horror movie, don't it? <laughs> Lord have mercy. Frankenstein yeah. stuff. He was trying to create a planet of the real apes. My gosh. No, see, the thing is, it's, that goes to show you right there, the idea of evolution and stuff like that was instantly embraced by a bunch of people who didn't have a good moral center. Mm -hmm. I mean, it really was, and they tried to use it for justification for a lot of horrific deeds. And you've seen that, you've seen that, um, there was a man named G.K. Chesterton who spoke out against this stuff back, back in, during that time. And he died in 1937, I think Chesterton did. But he, he opposed, he saw the horrors that was going to happen from trying to dedu reduce humans to nothing more than this primate existence and those prime, you know, our primate ancestors and how that actually have a negative effect on our, mm. how we perceive humans. So there are some people out there who already saw that far off, how horrific this was going to be. And this, uh, here, this what he was doing. Yeah. Okay. G.K. Chester, Chesterton saw but this kind yeah, of stuff. Yeah, because he tried it with horrible. all kind of races. He, he didn't just try it with one race. Right. He tried it. He, he, he did it with several. Yeah, because the thing is, the, when you told, told, when he told he, you, you think that all we are is have this animal origins and reduce it to that level. Well, let's face it, we eat animals every day. We wear leather. We, uh, we depend on medical research and you using animals. So... You know, we're supposed to have some kind of ethical considerations with those subjects we use for that kind of stuff, even mm -hmm. animals. But when you got this like, pronounced, like, really, well, I'd say the zealot atheist, or these people who don't just see, want to see humans as animals, there's no way to go with that, you know, except yeah, for what this is what generated. Are supposed to do no harm. Yeah, right. That's, that's their... Well, he a wasn't a doctor. Home. He was a doctor. Some crazy doctors, he, too. Good. He was... Know? The thing is, just because a person's a doctor doesn't give, make them automatically a moral that's person. True. That's true. It's like a pastor in the church. Don't that's make true. them all right. Right. Either. That's right. They still are a, a man. Yeah. Yeah. Do no harm. All right. But in here, that specifically say what he did to black women. Yeah. So come back.
with some more information. Oh, I'm life. gonna do How that. How he died, you know. Let us know. Keep us I, I didn't see a picture of him. I mean, is that picture? I got of some him? pictures mm. of him. Uh, he he should be to put them up. You can look at them and mm. check them out. They are in there. Wow. That's him. I got him up there. But okay, let me uh, let's close right out. There. Okay, yeah. that's our story about Planet of the Apes. Catherine called it Planet of the Apes. <laughs> uh, Ilya Ivanovich <laughs> Ivanov. Failure. <laughs> Thank God he was. <laughs> who uh, had did artificial insemination on black women, mm -hmm. Asian women. He, it just didn't limit it to one. Uh, tried to make a pl uh, Planet of the, the Apes. apes. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Okay. And <laughs> our story about the founding father, Willie Buck of Phi Eta Psi fraternity, and also remember to celebrate Kwanzaa. Kwanzaa. Today is Ujima, and you still got four days. Find somewhere to celebrate Kwanzaa. Amen. There is some information out there about Malala Kawanja, who was the person that founded Kwanzaa. The thing about that is, yeah, he found it, and I think it's a good thing. I'm not going to hold Kwanzaa hostage because of what he did. Mm -hmm. You know, because I love the principles. I do too. And if you, you know, use them throughout the year, uh, you'll have a better life. The Absolutely. The principles, principles are, like Ujima, mm -hmm. is collective work and responsibility. And, you know, it's been going on for so long, but yet mm -hmm. our people have not came together. Mm -hmm. And even try to real after Kwanzaa's over, it's done. Mm -hmm. They don't. But well, the first principle is emoji. <laughs> they don't even try unity. Yeah, we haven't had unity in so long. Nope. Just Some on occasion. And then, but those are people that know who we are, mm -hmm. know where they came from, and know what we must do. Mm -hmm. Come together, mm -hmm. Harambe, pull together, right. and unify Umoja, you mm -hmm. know. So if you go with all the principles that's out there of the first celebration of Kwanzaa, you you can't you, you can't lose with it. Right. You cannot right. lose. You can't do that but move forward. Absolutely. But it's only a few of us out here that believe mm -hmm. in unity and everything. So um Dippy <laughs> number two. Say your name again. The Vidian. Davidian. 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 I thank you for being on our program today. I think you carried yourself very nicely. I thought you was going to make a lot of noise and stuff. But thank you so much for being our guest. Say thank you for having me. Thank you for having Stop, me. Because I'm hearing that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I hope you enjoyed our stories today. Satora's so Black History Corner Internet Program comes to you via satellite at allpointstv.com. And I also want to say the reason we were not here on our last program, both of us had this thing, this it's cold, cold this whatever was going around, and we didn't want to give it to nobody. So we both had to lay at home mm -hmm. and rest. And now we got snow and it's messy mm -hmm. outside. So we got to get home. Yeah. <laughs> right. I know how you feeling. <laughs> You ain't driving. Your grandmama driving. What up? She driving, but I'm still scared for her. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she'll get you home safe, though. Absolutely. Yeah. All right, you can watch our program every second and fourth Monday of the month, unless the day falls on a holiday, starting at 3.30 p.m. Also, be sure to watch what's going on with political pundit Dr. George Moss every Monday at 2 p.m. As always, I like to say to all of you who have came, seen, and heard our program today, thank you. I pray that you have learned some things about our American African heritage and culture. And if you have liked what you have seen and heard, please pass it on to others. Mm -hmm. Until next time, my God-given, incredible, resilient, great, powerful, and beautiful black family keep on standing and be sure to keep on keeping on with us and we wish you all a happy kwanzaa and a prosperous blessed wonderful magnificent new year amen hallelujah and hotel which means peace, peace.